Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. I hope your summer is going so well. For me, it is definitely going. It's been a busy one, but I'm having a lot of fun, spending a lot of time with family and friends and enjoying every single minute of these hot, humid days. I hope you are all safe and enjoying yourselves as well. What you think about yourself and say to or about yourself will determine how your day, week, month, year, and even your life will go. It is crucial to think before you speak. Here's why. When you open your mouth and say things about yourself or anyone else that are negative, you are opening the door for Satan to step in and create chaos in your world. I know that may sound a little over the top, a little crazy, but stick with me because we're going to dive into this and we're going to learn ways to adopt a positive mindset practice, which at the end of the day is critical for us to be able to think positively, believe in ourselves and produce the outcomes that we are craving. So As I said, it is essential to think before you speak because what you say can be used or taken advantage of by Satan. He is waiting for every opportunity to distract you and pull you away from your foundation in Christ, from your relationship with Christ. He lurks about waiting to convince you that your identity is what you think and say about yourself, not what your identity in Christ says about you. In 1 Peter 3.10, Peter says, For he who would love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Likewise, in James 3.8, we are reminded, But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. The words that roll off your tongue have the potential to ruin you if they come from a negative thought, a negative mindset, or a lack of belief. When you say phrases like, I'm anxious, I'm tired, I'm stressed, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm not smart, I'm bad at that, you are opening the door for Satan. In addition, you're verbally expressing a lack of belief and faith in who Christ says you are in him. Verbalizing negative thoughts is like owning them as true. When in reality, God has given you the resources and all you need for the opposite of the negative statements to be true. For you to know and understand and believe in the truth. Instead of saying, I'm anxious, try, I feel unsettled, but I know God has told me not to be anxious about anything, but in everything, give thanks. And from there, state things about your current situation that you are grateful for and ask God to calm your heart and quiet your mind so that you can also hear the Holy Spirit as he provides you guidance, strength, knowledge, and wisdom. In Philippians 4, 4 4-9, Paul tells us, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's one of my 
all-time favorite verses, one that I often have to meditate on and recite to myself over and over again because of that tendency to let those feelings of anxiety and fear and doubt bubble up and take over my mind. So I try to focus specifically on that verse to bring me back to reality, to where I am meant to be as a believer in Christ as my savior. Paul emphasizes the need to think good, pleasing thoughts. When we think positive and pray, we alleviate Satan's ability to attack. Now he's always going to be there. We know that. We know that in the spiritual realm, he's there. He has his, his demons and his spirits and all the evil things lurking about. We keep those doors closed to him and his evil schemes that he uses to derail us at bay when we focus on the positive, when we have God's word in us, near us, and when we stay close to him in a relationship with him. Chaos in our thinking is not something we need. This is especially true if we want to live a purposeful, an impactful life and bring glory to God. Let's face it, life is hard at times. We're all going to face challenges. We're all going to face things that are really difficult to move through. It could be an illness. It could be a death. It could be a, a struggle or a challenge within a relationship. All of those things can happen, but how we approach them how we believe, how we think are going to determine the end result and the day-to-day -day experience. What you believe about yourself will determine your outcomes. And what you believe about God will influence what you believe about yourself. If you allow chaos in your mind, you will experience doubt and fear. It's just that simple. Your belief in God's power in your life and your abilities will falter. Beliefs empower your thoughts, which influence the words you speak and the emotions you feel. Your emotions empower your choices and behaviors, which ultimately determine your outcomes. You can see how the cascade of events can alter your day-to-day -day life experiences. If you doubt the power of the words, of your words, I should say, read Proverbs 18, 21, which says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Wow. Think before you speak, friend, and implement a positive mindset practice to adopt the mindset of Christ who created you in his image. When you think about it, he suffered immensely and yet he never faltered in his belief in God the Father. He went to him and he treasured him and his time with him and the advice that he was given through the Holy Spirit. He was such a good example for us to stay in that faith and believe so if this has made you think, wow, I say negative things out loud all the time. It's time to stop and adopt a solid daily positive mindset practice so that you can have the mindset of Christ. Then here are some tools to help you. So my suggestion is to adopt the practice of my five or my seven C's. Sorry about that. My seven C's, which are Catch the negative thoughts before you speak them out loud. Challenge the negative thoughts. Are they realistic? Would Jesus think them about you? Would a friend or loved one whom you trust think or say them about you? Confess your lack of belief. Confess the negative thoughts. Because when you are expressing something negative about yourself or anyone else for that matter, but we're speaking mostly today about speaking 
ill things about you, yourself, when you do that, you demonstrate to God that you don't believe in him. You don't believe what he says about you. You don't express belief that you're truly worthy according to how he says you are worthy. So ask for forgiveness and ask him to give you the strength not to think those things or say those things. Collaborate with the Holy Spirit and ask him for the knowledge and wisdom to change your thoughts and to increase your faith. From there, change your thoughts and change the words you speak. This takes daily practice. It's not easy, friends. I'm not going to pretend it is. I have to work at this practice every single day, multiple times a day. But the more you change your thoughts, the more control that you're going to have over your thoughts, over what you speak, over your choices and behaviors. Confidence will become second nature as the negative thoughts decrease and you focus on your belief in Christ as your savior and what is possible through him. If you do not actively change your thoughts and avoid speaking negative words out loud, they may become your reality. Words are powerful. Choose them wisely so as to manifest the life Jesus has for you, not the things of the world, but the relationship and the abundance that he has in store for you. You, with the help of the Holy Spirit, can change your life one thought, one word at a time. Get to it. And I suggest that you use these seven G C's as a journaling method. We know that when we take things from our mind and put them on paper, we can change the neural pathways in our brain. The more we do this, the more positive our brain is going to be. Your mind is part of your soul. So the more work you do on your mind, and get into a positive mindset practice, the healthier your brain and body will be. Friends, schedule a call with me to learn more about my services and how I work with my clients to achieve the positive mindset practice, to be able to grow sustainable businesses. And if you discover that you're spending a ton of time on social media and it is causing you to experience more negative thoughts, a decrease in belief in Christ or in yourself or in those around you, it's okay. Step away. You have the ability to put your phone down and get off of social media and still be able to grow your business because you can grow a business without social media. There are many ways, and I will link in the show notes to a free ebook that will give you 10 strategies that you can use to grow your business without having to be on social media if it is a distraction and it is creating chaos in your mind. All right, friends, I love you all. Thank you for being here. I will see you again soon. But until then, enjoy the summer. 